We're Will and Kati, and we're currently in Poland, a country known mostly for its meat dishes. But we're mostly vegetarian, which means we don't eat chicken, beef, or pork. But that's okay, because we're here in its capital, Warszawa, and we're going to see what kind of vegetarian dishes we can find as we explore this wonderful city. But the question is, is vegetarian food here any good? We're at one of the many milk bars throughout the city and we don't always know what we can get at the milk bars because some things are available, some things aren't. I'm so excited about this food here. It looks amazing, all of it. We're gonna start off with our soup and I just wanna say first of all, that we have had so many delicious soups here in Poland. There's a mushroom soup down in Zakopane. I think that was my favorite soup so far, but regardless, all the soups we've had in Poland have been excellent. Might be because it's also cold, but I also think they have excellent soup. So let's try this one out. A lot of flavor. I definitely taste a lot of dill, which is excellent. And yeah, the vegetables are seasoned perfectly. Now this next dish I'm super excited about because we haven't had anything like this at all in Poland, but it's very vegetarian friendly. So it's a potato pumpkin puree. And on the side are some chickpeas. Let's try it. This is the potato pumpkin puree. Definitely taste the pumpkins in that. Now the chickpeas. I love chickpeas. Wow, the seasonings on that are amazing. It's like a red sauce with onions and I don't know if it's peppers, but yeah, it's delicious. I'm gonna try it together. I feel like you should combine that. Definitely two separate things that need to be combined because that was just excellent. Um, yeah, that's an amazing vegetarian dish at a milk bar. Like We haven't seen anything like that and I don't know if it's just because it's fall, but I'm excited that we have that here. And then finally, we have our potato pancakes, which we've had before um, in a few different spots. I think the first time we had it, we didn't have the sour cream on it, but someone told us we needed to. The second time we had it was in Poznan, and there was sour cream on it with some, I think, chives and stuff. That was excellent. Now these, again, do not have the sour cream on it, but we've got four of them, and it's eight sweat So let's try this out. They just made them. We actually had to wait for them. Crispiness on the outside, nice and soft on the inside. Those are really excellent. I know we don't have the sour cream to go with it, but consistency and taste are perfect. Now our final thing is not food, it's a drink and it's called compote. It is a fruit juice and not like a fruit juice in the States where it's tons of sugar and like 10% fruits, but naturally made out of various different fruits. This was two zwate. Yeah, that's really good. It, I think I taste like, maybe like various berries and maybe like a cranberry. But yeah, that's really good. And it's cool because a lot of these people sitting here have this, so it's definitely a thing you need to try while at a milk bar. Uh, one zapiekanka mushrooms. It's weird not being able to see them. And they can't see me. Like a giant. Here we have a zapia kanka, which in English literally translates to casserole. Aside from pierogi, this is probably the most popular Polish dish, especially if you want something in a hurry to take on the go with you. Now this has bread, cheese, mushrooms, and some kind of herbs on it with, I think, ketchup as the topping. Now we've had zapia kanki all over Poland, and probably our favorite one that we've had was in Wrocław, where it was highlighted by tartar sauce and cranberry sauce. But let's see what a more traditional topping tastes like here. As you can see, this thing is massive. I mean, it's bigger than my head. It's probably almost as long as a lot of people's arms. And this whole thing, this whole massive situation here was only 17 zawate. So when you're biting into it, you immediately taste the crunch. The bread is nice and toasted. And you have the melted cheese on it, the mushrooms. Now we did have this once before, more of a traditional style where the mushrooms, it was very dense and packed with mushrooms and they didn't have the flavoring that this one has right here. So this is really good as far as the mushrooms. 
and the cheese and the bread. We don't normally put ketchup onto things, but I think this still goes nicely with the rest of the toppings. Highly recommend this when you're in the capital. I'm so excited because you cannot have Polish food without having pierogi. And so we've had pierogi in almost every other city we've been to. We've had them normally boiled, but we did have baked pierogi in Torun but we're gonna try fried pierogi. And those are gonna be our savory ones. And as you can see, it says a little without meat. They have a variety plate, which comes with nine dumplings and that's 33 swate. And there's a mixture of Ruthenian, cottage cheese, buckwheat, lentil, forest mushrooms, spinach and feta, cabbage and mushrooms and potatoes. So those are our savory ones. And then we have a plate of traditionally boiled, but those are with Polish fruits. And this plate also comes with nine, and it is 34 zwarte. And our Polish fruit dumplings come with raspberries, cottage cheese, strawberries, black currants, apple raisins, and cinnamon. So they do come with a side of sauce. So for our savory ones, we got sour cream. And then for our sweet ones, we got sweet cream. I love the texture of them. It's like a, you get the little crunch, um, and it's a little bit harder, but it's not like really hard, like the, the baked pierogi that we had. Absolutely excellent, and I'm so excited that we have a variety of different vegetarian stuffings in there. Now what I'm really excited for are for these fruit ones. Now, I don't know if you can tell, you can see there's a bit of a pink hue to it. Mmm. It doesn't say, but there is some cottage cheese with it. But yeah, you can taste the fresh, fresh fruits. I definitely love these pierogi. Everywhere we've gone, we have been able to get lactose-free milk or milk substitute like almond milk or soy milk for free. There's no upcharge. And being from America, we're used to being upcharged for any type of additional milk or milk substitute you put in your coffee. We're at a very, very popular creperie here in Poland. They have them all throughout the country, but we're in Warsaw right now, so they have one right here in the capital. And we have three different kinds of crepes. The first one we have is filled with cottage cheese, potatoes, and sauce. You do get a side sauce on the side, and so we got a, a spicy tomato sauce. So I'm gonna try this one first. Yeah, it's great. These are not thin crepes, like what I'm used to. It's more of like a, a thicker type of crepe. So there's a lot of sustenance, because usually when you eat crepes, at least in the past, I have felt like they're super thin and they're not very filling, but this is great. It's filled with a bunch of stuff on the inside and the flavor is fantastic. Okay, so the second one that we have is more of like a Italian style, I wanna say, because it has olives, tomatoes, mozzarella, pesto, and rocket salad. And I got a garlic sauce on the side for that one. Definitely a little Italian spices in there with the pesto. And then to end off, we have a sweet chocolate crepe. And that one has white chocolate, prunes and wine, gingerbread crisp, and creamy sauce. So let's try our dessert crepe. Yeah, so this one's topped with so many delicious things. You've got cream, you've got some chocolate stuff. But again, it feels like a thick crepe once I, as I'm cutting it. So let's try this one. Yeah, that's delicious all the chocolatey goodness in there. And I think these, these little things are the gingerbread crisps that they said. So fantastic, all the crepes are delicious. As we mentioned before, Polish food is very meat heavy, but we stopped into a location that has vegan options of some of the most popular Polish dishes. The first thing we have here is a vegan tartare, which is 15 zawate. This has rice cakes and vegan tartare, which has pickled cucumber, red onion, vegan mayo, and wholemeal bread. At first glance, this definitely looks like raw beef with onions in it, and it looks like uh, mayonnaise on it with, well, pickles and onions, I guess they don't have to make vegan versions of that, but I'm not an expert on any sort of tartare, but this looks pretty spot on to me. It's really thick. It's definitely a little bit difficult to mix together, so that's very much like how mixing raw beef would be if you've ever made like meatballs or something like that from scratch. Let's try that. I don't know if I, I don't know if I would have tartare on a regular basis. So let's see how much it tastes like raw meat. It's cold, which is nice. And the main thing you taste is the onions and then you can taste um, a little bit of the pickles too. So it's not like super slimy, 
like I think actual meat would be, but it is cold and it is thick. So I think it's a pretty good substitute. Next, we have a vegan fried cutlet, the autumn edition, which is 30 zawate. And this is fried breaded soy cutlet served with mashed potatoes and dill, paired with cucumber salad and vegan sour cream and chives and fried beetroot salad. So this is absolutely a big time beast. Let's see how much this looks like actual meat. To be honest, I'm very self-conscious about cutting things because I feel like every YouTuber we watch, people make fun of the way that they cut. But this is how we cut in the United States, so I don't know what to tell you guys. I think if it's trying to be like a chicken schnitzel, I think it's pretty spot on. I mean, the breading and stuff like that is going to be the same. Um, and I think I could taste slight hints of wannabe chicken. So I think this is a pretty good option as well. And if you don't want to go eat out, we've also seen plenty of vegan and meat substitute options in the grocery store, from schnitzel to like kielbasa to uh, chicken nuggets, all kinds of different things in the grocery stores. One of the things we did not expect at all was for there to be so many vegetarian options here in Poland. And not just vegetarian substitutes, but actual Polish cuisine that is naturally vegetarian. Poland has one of the best cuisines in the entire world. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is Witty Travels. What, what could, could possibly, possibly be next? next?